chaos reigns. Welcome back, everybody. I'm here once again for another episode of I Played a Thing, Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin, New Game Plus Abridged. And with me, as always, is Salad, who today is modeling the Chaos set, as obtained from Chaos Sorcerer Navlon, and I have to say, I think it's a pretty good look. A little on the brown side, but the cape is a nice touch, and that extra long belt gives it a little more energy as we're moving around. A little bit of visual liveliness, you could say. Anyway, we're starting out with enough souls in the stockpile for a level, so we're going to go ahead and take care of that first of all. And since it's just enough for a single level, we'll go ahead and drop that into HP, a little more of which never goes unappreciated. And then we can make our way back to Castle Drang Lake and proceed through that. Now right here I just left in a little experimentation I was doing with a hex that I had previously not really played with, that being Dark Greatsword. And you can see it does have a little startup and cooldown that kind of got me in trouble there, but I do like that damage. Dark Greatsword is more or less identical to the sorcery known as Soul Greatsword, except of course it uses dark damage and scaling instead of the uh, magic type damage and scaling. And also, in addition to the Sword Slash, it shoots out a little wave of dark energy, so a little bonus to it there. Hitting just with the Energy Blast doesn't do a whole lot compared to actually hitting with the sword, though. But naturally, hitting with both is going to be your best bet for damage. And having taken our uh, little practice run with... Dark Greatsword, I decided to see how it would fare against these horsehead statue guys that uh, gave me so much trouble in my initial run. And the answer is really well. Wow. Hitting with both the blade and the blast, you get four digit damage out of that, and... Yeah, that's uh, enough to one-shot one of these guys if I can hit them both clean. Yeah, wow. I know you saw me struggle with that quite a bit in the previous run when I was just doing it full melee style, but that made it downright trivial. I have to say, I'm glad I decided to do a little exploring with that particular new hex. Anyway, that clears our path toward the Looking Glass Knight, so we're going to go ahead and summon ourselves an entourage, the ever-competent Ashen Knight Boyd, And our good buddy from Fantasy Desert Scotland. Make sure we're all topped up. And the Looking Glass Knight has the worst defenses, elementally speaking, toward dark and I believe magic. So I'm just going to stick with dark damage for this guy, and just use my hexes, because since we are evenly split between intelligence and faith, that's what we do best. Oh, that was poorly timed. Now, I have to be careful with my aim and timing when it comes to using magic on this guy, because he does have that big old mirror shield, which is completely impenetrable. And when it comes to spells, Hitting that shield will cause them to rebound right back at you, which fortunately will not hit you. I mean, I'm pretty sure it, it never will. I've had uh, my own projectiles go straight through me without doing any damage, so it doesn't seem like they have any effect on you or your allies. But of course it means that you've wasted a cast and it doesn't do any damage to the actual enemy, and that's no help at all. Speaking of projectiles, Great Resonant Soul seems to be having a pretty solid effect on him. Very respectable damage. And as per the usual strategy, our phantom friends are uh, keeping him nice and busy. Alright, I'm out of Great Resonance, so let's see how the Dark Great Sword works out. Or at least we would if I hadn't completely missed with it. 
Oh well, got a good opportunity to drop some scraps on him while he's summoning out his Mirror Knight. Pretty sure that is just a standard NPC one and we didn't actually get a player summoned into the fight because he doesn't seem very effectual. Not super excited with how Scraps is working, but then again, Firestorm type of spells are always a little bit of a crapshoot since you can't actually directly aim them and you just have to kind of hope the, uh, the effects will come out where they're useful to you. Darkstorm, on the other hand, as long as we get right up in his grill, we can pretty much be guaranteed a certain amount of hits. Scraps are doing okay damage when they actually hit him, but I can't say as I'm all that impressed. Damn that mirror. I wish it were that good for spell blocking when you actually used it, but no, you have to actually uh, use the R2 to do it with proper timing. But never mind all that. We defeated. And for our New Game Plus boss bonus, we get the maximally upgraded Ring of Steel Protection. Not too bad. And with that accomplished, we'll take a little break and do a couple trades. Starting with our lesser trade items, as we typically tend to do. Uh, just a couple of elemental infusion stones from those. How about the somethings? Well, Demon's Great Hammer at least is something a little different, even if it's of no particular use to me. And another old whip. Nothing terribly exciting, but at this point in the game, how many terribly exciting things are really left? Well, levels. Levels are always kind of exciting. Especially we can add, when we can add to both of our damage stats. Make that Dark Greatsword hit a little harder yet. And about this time I realized I never actually activated the bonfire nearest to Orn effects, so I decided to go do that, and yes, there are actually a few new, uh, new Game Plus enemies here, just red phantom versions of the spiders that normally fill this room. And minor enemies though they are, I'm showing once again that you never want to completely underestimate or take for granted any kind of enemy. And of course, in close quarters with lots of enemies, the Chandler's Trident does start to feel a little cumbersome. Oh, now that's just embarrassing. Red Phantom or no, dying against plain vanilla spiders. Just not a good look for me. Well... We will have to have our revenge as soon as we get our human effigy popped there. And I have a perfect method of revenge right there in mind. Yes, it is our favorite vermin control measure. Dear old Darkstorm. And they managed to sneak a hit through in the beginning, but... After that initial bit of fuss, I have to say, I'm pretty satisfied with how that went. Now what, bitches? Now we can visit Ornifex quite easily. And we'll pay a little visit now. Hello? We do. And we can make our trade for the other Looking Glass Knight item. The Thorned Greatsword. Fearing something wicked, the king fled the castle and never returned. But his warrior, forever true to his command, stands ready to expunge those who would challenge him. 
I suppose the looking glass night is a decent test. Come back again if you find another soul. I'll do that. Now, the Thorn Greatsword, I actually have the stats to use that to fullest effect, so I'm just gonna take a moment and real quick demonstrate its special effect when using its R2 attacks off of either the one-handed or uh, two-handed stance. It shoots lightning. Not bad. We might actually be able to do a little damage with that, with our respectable faith this time around. And now, we're ready to move on to the Shrine of Quality Home Appliances. Ah, Dark Greatsword, where have you been all my life? Dark Orb, you're pretty nifty too. Alright, did you see that red phantom where I put the yellow arrow there? Well, I sure as shit didn't. I'm here trying to plink away at this priestess in the Shrine of Amana. And holy shit, where did that come from? Yeah, this is a new guy for New Game Plus, and I completely forgot he was here, didn't recognize I had triggered his appearance, and just got completely taken by surprise. Just a fella in pyromancer garb with a meat cleaver. Once I actually uh, got my composure back and was ready to fight properly, taking him down with the standard Dark Orb spam proved to be a fairly simple bit of business, but yes, that's another uh, lovely surprise for New Game Plus, and one that uh, came as a fresh surprise to me. That's the only thing that has changed in the Shrine of Amana for New Game Plus, though. And so that brings us to the Foreskin Frog. And to be perfectly honest with you folks, I was actually kind of sweating this fight a little bit. Reason being, the Demon of Song's attacks are very slow and fairly predictable, but they do hit very hard and I was kind of afraid that my timing and spacing would be off, being as I am not fighting with melee, as is my usual approach. Oh, loving that damage, though. The Demon of Song does not have particularly good resistance to any element except fire, so magic, lightning, dark, it's all good. And once again, since we have the stats to do hexes better than just about anything else, that is what I elected to stay with. And I cannot argue with the results. Getting over 700 damage off a single Great Resonance. Yeah, yeah, I think I can live with that. As long as I don't get too far away from him and trigger his charge, which is the one attack he has that is fairly consistently difficult to dodge completely. The big splashes, the water breath, the attempted grab, all of those are pretty manageable. Let's see how Dark Greatsword does. Pretty good, I should expect. Oh yeah, the blast. The blast on its own, not doing a whole hell of a lot. Let's see if we can clip him with the actual greatsword part of Dark Greatsword. Haha, <laughs> that's more like it. Whee. Oh wow, I cut that one a little close. Yeah, one more solid hit ought to do it. Since we're in fairly good shape, I'm gonna try and do it with a little bit of style points and Get a dark storm off in his face, if I can. Yeah, well, he shielded a little too fast to get more than a single hit in there, but now he has absolutely nothing left when it comes to health. Come on, open back up. 
sucker. Yep, really didn't have to be sweating that one at all. You know, it is only the foreskin frog. I don't really know what I was so worried about. It's time to say hello to our friend again. Ow. Until next time, Big Melty Head. See you around. He certainly does seem passionate about the falsehood of our existence. It'll be interesting to find out what his deal is. We'll actually get to do that this time. I won't be skipping his final conversation in order to lock myself into the standard ending. But that'll come a little later. For now, we're just going to head on back to Majula and cash in our Foreskin Frog Fun Bucks. There until... And she started to use her new dialogue. Once again, we've got enough for our, both of our damage stats, so we'll go ahead and invest a little further into those. And with that, I think we've had a full day, friends. We've had a busy day. Well, as always, everyone, I thank you very much for watching. Next time, we will proceed onward into the Undead Crypt and once again meet poor old Vendrick. We'll have to slay him eventually, but we probably won't do that right away. Well then, dear friends, until our paths cross once again, for Merchant Hagmalentia and Salad, I am Un, bidding you farewell and good dreams. My undying gratitude goes out once again to such very generous supporters as Justin Carpenter, Nolden, Zangamarth, Charlie Dunst, Anonymous Benefactor, John Madigan, Sanguine Games, Misha Van Doren, Craig Patterson, Frank Grizzy, Tim J, Lolo De Puzzlo, Joshua C. Ritchie, Jared C. Rice, Darren Chow, Sonic Rose, EX Potemkin, Alicia Gorenson, Argyle Jelly, Mechazorus, DG Jono, Doug Russell, August Fortnite, 
Patrick Bellinger, and the rest of the usual suspects. And I would, of course, also like to extend my gratitude to all commenters, subscribers, and watchers. It just wouldn't be the same without all you lovely folks to share my journeys with, so thank you, take care, and have a most excellent weekend.